What's going on, guys? This is Bruce Matz, and your host of the show, Metric Scout Fantasy Football, the show where we talk about all things fantasy football from DFS, the Dynasty, back from Dynasty, the redraft, and all the way to campus, to Canton. All of it. Something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, tell your homies. Today, we're going to be talking about to Marion Terry and how he projects at NFL level, how he should be valued in Dynasty Fantasy Football, and him overall as a prospect. And he's a fascinating player because of value, because of what he's done during his career at Florida State, and just a fun player to watch in general. He was redshirted his freshman year, so he didn't start producing until his redshirt freshman year at age 20, but that year he got 35 passes for 744 yards and 8 touchdowns that equated to a 22.96% mark share of the passing production for Florida State. And what that tells us is that he broke out his first year of playing. However, age 20 is kind of later in the game for age-adjusted production. He started his career at college a little bit later in the game, unless the birth date's wrong. But started his career later in the game. To be exact, it was 20.5 breakout age, if you want to be precise with it. The year following in 2019 was his major breakout season, his legit one from a counting stat perspective even, where he caught 60 passes for 1,188 yards and nine touchdowns, owning a 34.15% share of the passing production for Florida State. Also had three 100-yard games, 156 yards against Boston College, 131 yards against Florida, and 165 yards to finish off the season against Arizona State. And those two years, he had some impeccable numbers he's proved he was a, a deep threat yards after catch a guy in 2018 and 2019 combined he led all of college football with 20.3 yards per catch also during that time he was one of only three wide receivers jerry judy devonta smith and tamari and terry to have 10 or more catches go for 40 plus yards those stats Without even touching the tape, implies speed. It implies a guy that can get you yards after the catch. It implies that he can put up some numbers. Also, when you can count 2020 and 2019 together, he's averaging 56.8 receiving yards per touchdown. It's just impeccable, impeccable stacks. All from PFF, by the way. When you look at his player profile, You'll automatically see yards after the catch, excellent ball, tracking ability, and gets downfield quick. That, that's just the name of the game with this guy. 2020, things didn't go too great. I mean, we can't really say that with Florida State in general. Throughout his career, he's just played on a bad Florida State team, and him and Cam Akers, and they made the best out of it in 2019. Those two guys in 2019, Cam Akers, Tamarin Terry, that were the whole team. They were the main focus. 2020, it's a weird year. Weird year for everybody, me included. Uh, he played six games, caught 23 balls, 289 yards, one touchdown. Fluky season, 16.23% market share of the passing production. But the narrative is where it's at for this season for Tamarin Terry. He started off all right week one, catching six passes for 52 yards against Georgia Tech. And over time, he started developing an issue with his knee, had to get get a, get a quick procedure done, and then came back for his fifth game, had a goose egg against Louisville, and then caught two balls for 14 yards against Pittsburgh and said, that's it, I'm done with my year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ready for the draft as – what he should have been doing. It was a rough year for, for everybody, per se. Few people has made it out alive through this 2020 season. It, it kind of put a blemish on his profile because you look at the counting stats, you look at what he did figuratively during this 2020 season at age 22, and it is a black mark on his 
profile, but when you watch him on tape, you watch him play, you see a guy who's got speed to burn, lots of bursts. Yeah, I think he's got more bursts than speed, gets downfield, tracks the ball, gets from 0 to 100, uber fast. Also, he's been registered at 23.4 miles per hour in game speed. It was like one of the fastest wide receivers in college football once he got the full speed. I know at the pro day, he measured with a 4.45 40-yard dash. If you adjust those numbers, around 4.5 range. And with him measuring a little lighter at 207 pounds at 6'3", that is still an 80th percentile speed scholar. That is a good speed score still. There were reports that he was balking up like 220, 225 during his career at Florida State. So I don't know what his exact real weight was or if he's the guy that fluctuates or if he's naturally like a 205 or 207 pound guy, 210 guy. We don't know. But looking at his frame, he looks like he can carry some weight. And we watched him on tape. He's a guy that can move, get down the field. Uh, his athletic metrics are good. I mean, 80th percentile speed score is good. You watch him on tape, you see the speed, it matches up. You see good ball tracking ability, and he's got the size. So we got speed and length. This is something we don't have much in this class. We don't have many six foot three guys walking around this 2020 NFL draft class running deep downfield, blowing up defenses with speed to burn. So Marion Terry gives that to us. And I don't mind the lack of reduction during his redshirt junior year, 2020, because I, I got context around it. If I'm able to put context around this player, this player, Devonta Smith, Rashad Bateman, I, I can do it for Tamara and Terry. The 2020 is just a year of context, and j just in general, because it's just been weird. And I think him missing some games to his knee and that affecting... His overall output shouldn't be a black flag considering he was productive during his age 20 season in 2018 and then his age 21 season 2019 where from a market share perspective, efficiency perspective, he, he was spot on. He was on the trajectory of being one of the top wide receivers in college football. He was. He was considered a first round, second round pick in Debbie drafts just, just a year ago, like 12 months, 12 and a half months ago. He, he was a first-rounder or high-end Devy prospect. And now we get to the NFL draft. Things have changed. Now he's floating around mid-third round of rookie drafts. Uh, D Dynasty League Football's ADP has him around the 35-and-a-half thir range in ADP. I think wide receiver 17 off the board, which is a very good price. He packs a lot of upside. He has the upside due to his speed, due to his size, due to his length. Right place, right time. He could blow up and you do not pay anything for him he's pretty much free a third round picks are free he's a free player that that could blow up on you the floor is obviously very low because we don't know his draft capital it's probably going to be pretty low maybe like a fifth rounder sixth rounder maybe fourth if we're lucky so mid rounder for lucky late round guy it's just how the cookie crumbles he's damaged goods with the knee so NFL teams are going to be looking like that and the production isn't hyper production, hyper on a county stats basis. There are some good things he does on tape. There's a lot of things. I like him a lot, especially for the price point. For the price, you're getting him at a third round price tag. I would pay up for him. I would pay late second round, early third round to get him. I, you're, you may have to because there's probably somebody in your league that likes him. Unless you fall 6th, 7th round, then you may be able to get him late 3rd, early 4th. But wherever he's falling in drafts, just pay a few spots more to get him if you like him. Because I guarantee you're going to get sniped on him a few times. Because he's got his own hype train. There are some people that like him a lot. I like him. I'm willing to invest in him. And the price is worth the risk because there's no risk and the upside's there. Tall, lanky, wide receiver who can catch the ball downfield, who's got speed to burn, can make something happen at the NFL level. And we're not paying anything for that. It's free. And if it doesn't pan out, we just drop from our rosters and move on. No big deal. But he's a good prospect to have. Considering it was a first-round Debbie pick 12 and a half months ago. First round, second round guy. He was a coveted Debbie prospect. And now he's free. Take it. Enjoy it. Have it on your roster. Invest. And maybe you can 
boost up like Dogecoin. I want to thank you guys for watching the show. It means a lot to me that you're sticking along this long. If you've been enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Ring that bell and then tell your homies. And I'll catch you next time.